coming on to the ultrasound machine what is the hardware so ultrasound machine has various knobs like these various transducers so these are transducers there is a monitor which displays the images and then there is a processing unit and then this big thing where all the panels and the controls are this is the motherboard okay so these are the basic hardware of the ultrasound machine and what is the principle of ultrasound machine so the principle of ultrasound is pulsed echo is pulsed echo that is what is an echo echo is an sound wave so sound waves are sent in pulsed manner so this is one pulse then after break another pulse of sound waves are sent through the transducer so this this is a transducer sound waves are sent in pulses into the body so if this is the body tissue if this is the body tissue sound waves are sent in pulses and within the body various tissue structures either reflect these sound waves completely reflect them completely so all those tissue which reflect the sound waves completely appear as hyperechoic okay remember those which reflect are hyperechoic and those which allow sound waves to be transmitted or we can say absorbed they appear hypoechoic so depending upon the extent of absorption of these sound waves either very black less black or if they reflect depending upon the amount of reflection so if it's completely reflecting it will appear very bright like a stone if it reflects partially it will appear less white so different shades of gray again are represented on to the ultrasound monitor depending upon the extent of reflection and the extent of transmission of these ultrasound waves and these reflected these reflected ultrasound waves are again picked up by the same transducer and converted into the images that we see on the monitor okay so this is the basic principle of ultrasound machine how it works all right so what is the terminology that we used so the terminology that we use in ultrasound we use the suffix echoic okay echoic so all those structures which appear bright will be termed hyperechoic on ultrasound those which appear black will be called hypoechoic and those which appear very black very black we call them anechoic okay so these are the basic terminology the suffix we use is echoic in ct we use the suffix dense so hyperdense hypodense in mri we use the suffix intense so hypointense hyperintense respectively all right so these are the few examples so if the sound waves will are reflected completely for example like stones they appear very hyperechoic they appear very hyperechoic so this is a gb calculi this is a gb calculi we see that it is appearing very bright on ultrasound and it's reflecting all the sound waves that is falling onto it hence it is hyperechoic and since there are no sound waves that are transmitted through the stone there is a, there appears this posterior acoustic shadowing we call it posterior acoustic shadowing and this is the hallmark of calculi this is the hallmark of calculi now be it anywhere be it gb be it kidneys be it in pancreas so pancreatic calcification we see in chronic pancreatitis these also appear hyperechoic and show posterior acoustic shadowing all right so another type of structures are anechoic structures if they allow sound waves to pass completely through them the sound waves are not reflected at all so these structures appear very black okay also called as anechoic structures and since they are allowing all the sound waves to pass through them the surface that comes in contact after them the posterior wall of the cyst reflects some of the sound waves so it appears bright this is known as posterior acoustic enhancement posterior acoustic enhancement so remember anechoic structures plus posterior acoustic enhancement are typical of cystic structures 
cystic structures okay so for example simple cyst of liver for example gbs for example urinary bladder all of them will show posterior acoustic enhancement with uh, anechoic structures now some of the structures do not allow the sound waves to pass completely some of the sound waves are transmitted and some of them are reflected so they appear black not very black but black as compared to the surrounding liver parenchyma now these structures are known as hypoechoic so they are black as compared to the surrounding liver parenchyma or the parenchyma but not very black so we call them hypoechoic okay so these are the most common appearances of lesions most of the lesions in tissues are hypoechoic hyperechoic lesions are very few so what are the hyperechoic lesions so in liver in liver what are the hyperechoic lesions hyperechoic lesions so first we red first were stones they were very hyperechoic and they showed posterior acoustic shadowing another hyperechoic lesion in the liver are hemangiomas okay so remember liver hemangiomas are also hyperechoic but they do not show any posterior acoustic enhancement okay so this is one of the example of a hyperechoic structure in the liver another hyperechoic structure in kidneys is a angiomyolipoma is an angiomyolipoma in kidneys it also appears as hyperechoic and it also does not show any posterior acoustic shadowing okay so this is a brief capsule about hyperechoic hypoechoic and anechoic structures on ultrasound now coming on to the main ultrasound transducer which is the backbone of an ultrasound imaging so this is the uh, mota mota diagram of an ultrasound transducer and which is the most important structure in this it is the piezoelectric element so this is the backbone of an ultrasound transducer and what is it the material that it is made of it is lead zirconate titanate titanate also known as pzt so lead zirconate titanate is the material of which the piezoelectric element is made of and there are different types and shapes of an ultrasound transducer we'll read it in subsequent uh, slides what are the various types but these can be linear curvilinear or a phase array ultrasound probes now all of these ultrasound probes have some basic principles in common how a sound wave is produced so these ultrasound transducer are connected to the electric supply via transducer lead and when the electricity is passed through when electricity is passed through the piezoelectric element there are some compressions and rarefactions which are induced into the crystal so the crystal undergoes vibrations secondary to stimulation by electricity and due to this vibration some compression and rarefactions are introduced into the crystal and these result in formation of sound waves okay so piezoelectric element have this property of converting electrical energy into mechanical energy in the form of sound waves now these sound waves are transmitted through the body and there is one matching layer in between the piezoelectric element and the surface of the transducer now this matching layer what does it do so it has density similar to the piezoelectric element and so it reduces the impedance it reduces the impedance so that the sound waves can travel faster from the piezoelectric element onto the body they do not get uh, reduced in intensity okay and we as you guys have seen in clinics and in your personal experiences also sometimes we put an ultrasound jelly below the transducer on top of the transducer right now what does this jelly does so this jelly also reduces the impedance reduces the impedance so if it was air in between the body and the transducer we know that air is a poor conductor of sound waves hence the sound waves will get reduced in intensity to make sure that the sound waves are of optimal intensity when they go into the body a jelly is placed in between to reduce the impedance okay so within the body the sound waves travel and they are either reflected as we saw previously transmitted or refracted right and again these are 
picked up by the same transducer which converts the sound waves into electricity by the piezoelectric element so this piezoelectric element works both ways converting electricity into sound waves and sound waves into electricity as well okay and these electrical signals are then processed by the cpu and converted into the relevant uh, images that we see on the screen so this is how an ultrasound transducer is the backbone of an ultrasound machine